everybody, Dr. Joel Parker, and this is Whiteboard Wednesday. This week we're talking about because there are certain times a year that you can get into a financial cash crunch. And depending on where you are, that's usually starting kind of in the fourth quarter slide, uh, September, and moving all the way out until oftentimes March until you start to get that swell of the spring cases coming in and the heartworm testing and all these kind of things. So there's other parts of the world, for example, where you get the Canadians coming down, you get the snowbirds coming down, you know, and your business gets busy in the winter, but that's usually the exception. For the far more the norm is that uh, starting kind of September long weekend into those early spring months, there is a fourth quarter slide and this is where the cash crunch can really come and where it really counts. So my title here is, are, are you experiencing financial malpractice? You know, malady means bad, you know, bad, bad financial habits and routines and so forth. And let's kind of go over the top five or so that I want you to start looking out for, especially this time of year. And once you're looking out for them, why not continue the rest of the year, right? Why not? Okay, first one we're going to look at here into the action steps is mischarges. This is really, really common. We can get lackadaisical about missing charges. Oftentimes the medical record is not complete by the time the client arrives in the afternoon and so the receptionist closes out the invoice and misses charges. So the bottom line is get your medical records done, build up those invoices, don't miss charges. A solution for that over here is to have your veterinary assistant be walking around with you and have them make up the bill for you and get the veterinarians completely off the finance lines. All they've got to do is look at what you're doing and build up the invoice and present that to the client. Okay, here's another one uh, that is a sign of, fel of financial malpractice, and that's giving away services. You know, this is, we, as veterinarians, we love to help people, and by and large, veterinarians do not get into veterinary medicine to make money. That is by far the rare thing. In fact, when you hear these funny stories about veterinarians competing for cases in order to make more money, or veterinarians charging over what needs to be done, you know, I don't know if I've ever actually seen that, but I have seen hundreds and thousands of cases where veterinarians don't charge enough. Guys, we love to help people. The problem is, as an owner and in charge of the financial well-being, the financial health of your practice, you can't give things away. So that's what I want you to look at there. Again, here's your veterinary assistant that comes in and they're going to make up the invoice and make sure that you're not giving anything away. I would just literally take the veterinarians off that finance line if you need to. Okay, so this is going to increase what's called the inflow of cash. You want to get all everybody paying. You don't want to go on to large accounts receivable this time of year. Basically, everybody pays up front, including the equine clients, large animal clients. There are some that you can get to do it. They'll throw it on a credit card. So you want to really, really open up the gates and manage your inflow. Then what you want to do is start uh, looking at and controlling the outflow of money in the practice. I'm giving you guys some tips as the chief financial officers in your practice, okay? So first of the one, the one that can really get you this time of year is overtime. You know, you don't have enough people, you've come out of the summer months where you've got a lot of overtime, you've got to curtail that. You guys have all heard about keeping your staff expenses less than 24% times your gross income. So you've got to keep looking at that. In the winter months, you oftentimes will get what we call under time, where you've got people standing around and not, you know, keeping busy and so forth. You've got to keep busy. Uh, the under time people can start promoting. We've gone over that in past Whiteboard Wednesdays. But I want you to watch the overtime. Keep your staff expenses less than 24%. That's all of your your uh, employer source deductions, your pension, and your you know 401ks, RSPs, and Canada stuff like that. That's all has to be inclusive in that 24%. Here's the other next big one I want you to really watch, and this is unauthorized authorized purchases. This is purchasing stuff on your drug orders that is way beyond what you need. And you need to start putting in a purchase order system that controls that. Put an eye on what goes out the door. I would just bring in the policy that nothing gets ordered unless you've had a look at it and put an eyeball on it, especially in these winter months. This one here gets a little rough. This is theft. Guys, I had it going on in my practice, and you may have it going on in your practice. You may have it in the past in your practice, and as a very experienced practitioner once told me as a, as a young owner, he says, Joel, you're going to have it going on in the future. The fact of the matter is, there are things that are easy to steal out of a practice. The number one is food, okay? The second number one are your heartworm meds, okay? Heartworm meds, and these actually should be kept under lock and key. Now, you're not going into a season where we're going to necessarily have huge inventories of that on, but the very expensive drugs warrant putting under lock and key. I highly recommend you do it. And then I just put down here other. There's many other things that can attribute to financial malpractice in your practice uh, in your slower months. You have to tighten things up. You need to have people busy. You have got to get people on the phones when you're not so busy. You got to be promoting. You got to you know get people cleaning up. Remember the whiteboard Wednesday. If you got time to lean, you've got time to clean. Keep your people busy. 
Okay, everybody, so as you go through into these lower gross income months ahead, I want you guys to tighten your belt, and importantly, I want you to start wearing your hat as the chief financial officer and really caring what goes on with the finances. It's a separate hat from a veterinarian, you see, but somebody has to do it, and as owners and managers, that's your hat. So hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next week, and don't forget to subscribe down below, and we'll see you then.